I'm Patrick Minford, Professor of Applied Economics at Cardiff Business School in Cardiff University. And uh, I uh, helped to form a group called Economists for Brexit because eight of us decided that the lies in this campaign had to be countered with good economics. Now, the most important deceit in this campaign came from the so-called consensus of the Treasury and the economic modeling uh, groups that uh, joined with the Treasury, like um, the, the OECD, the IMF, uh, the National Institute, um, PwC, and, and a long list. And what did they all do? Because fundamentally, these groups are all pro-EU because either they get their money from universities that get money from the EU, or they get it from business that get money from the EU, or they get it from governments that are in cahoots with the EU. So all these people really are viscerally pro-EU. So how did they manage to produce this consensus that everybody's quoted against Brexit? The answer is simple. They used an assumption that Brexit uh, would reduce free trade by leaving the EU, so the EU would put barriers in, in the way of our exporters, and then after leaving the EU, we keep all the barriers that the EU currently has on the rest of the world. So the net result would be to reduce free trade. Well, everybody knows that if you put worse assumptions that free trade will be reduced into any economic assessment, it's bound to give you a negative because free trade is good for us. That's something we know. Every first year student knows it. So what these consensus modelers that led by the Treasury did was to put into the center of their assessment a seriously false assumption about Brexit. Now what's the, and, and they got negative results and that's been quoted time and again. The consensus says this, the consensus says that it's all bad. The truth is Brexit is good. Why? Because of the opposite uh, fact that it is, it is actually about increasing free trade. Because this gives us an opportunity to get rid of EU protectionism, which is very big. Food, manufacturers, they're all protected, which means, in simple terms, that instead of paying world prices for food or world prices for, for, for cars and so forth from the rest of the world, we pay world prices plus trade barriers that the EU puts on these products that raise their price about 20% on our calculation. So you're paying 20% more for what you buy from the rest of the world. So Brexit gives us the chance to get rid of this protection, sweep it all aside, unlike what the consensus assumed. So yes, we'll pay some tariffs for our exporters, we'll pay some tariffs going into the EU. Actually, we could refund them. It's, they're quite small. They're about, average about 2%. But our importers could get goods and, uh, uh, from the rest of the world and food and manufacturers 20% cheaper. That's huge. It means the cost of living would drop 8%. That's £40 per household adult. That creates dynamism for the economy because those lower costs that everyone's paying feed into the whole of our economy as lower costs, making it more competitive, grow more, more employment, better living standards. That is what Brexit does properly assessed with the right assumptions. And that's why, that's why my group of very distinguished economists, I may say, with a lot of experience over the years of analyzing the British economy, that's why we've supported Brexit and said, it's good for our economy. It'll create more competition lower prices, higher living standards, and of course, get us out of all this regulation that the EU has in the single market, regulating every nook and cranny of our industrial lives. And also, it'll give us control again of our borders so that we become a sovereign democratic country with control of our policies, our borders, and our laws. And that's really what we want and, and what Brexit means.